Okay, well, it looks like you guys are it. And uh, so, um, well, we're sort of gonna have a little bit of fun with this Noah, um, Noah and the Ark. Um, but I thought I would start out, and because I am recording this, so, okay. <clears throat> I thought we would start out one more time with the Bible, okay? The Bible is a witness to God's revelations and inspiration for the benefit of humanity. One may refer to this sacred book as a guide to leading humanity to God, that is, to peace, harmony, health, and prosperity. One must also realize that the book was written by men who had some experience with God and who had heard the divine inner voice. It is a book of guidance in all phases of human relations. All right, and I'm doing that because, <clears throat> let, let's go to, all right. <clears throat> and then we go to, to, the, to the book of Genesis. All right, and the, the primary, <clears throat> the primary objective of Genesis is to present to the people of Israel the history of their ancestors and the origins of their faith. Now, according to Jewish biblical scholars, the major theme of the book is God's role in human affairs. God created the world and made human beings to work in it and care for it, but humanity kept continually turning away from God. And that's what you see in the Old Testament. Um, people, well, it, after, after Noah, uh, we get to Abraham, but it's there, they're always falling away from, from um, God. And then of course, God forgives and takes them back. But so, so with Noah, um, with Noah, we have a story, okay? And just a little bit, <clears throat> this is a story. It should not be taken literally, all right? It is a legend and it is not history, all right? And when they're, uh, let's see, uh, The um, the session is being recorded, and it will be available um, on it will be available online after tonight. Okay, and I I I don't know that you can record it, but um, it, it's okay if you do. But this session will be recorded, um, and uh, and it's available as are all the sessions. Okay. So Noah and the flood, all right. And, and, and remember this, this story, all right, it, it's, it has, it's always been interpreted uh, that the whole earth, the whole, the whole earth was flooded. But in actuality, it wasn't the whole earth. It was only in that region. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna, we're not going to go through all of the, um, um, all of the scriptures and, we're not, but we're gonna we're gonna do well. First of all, since we study the Bible using the seven keys, um, this is one. This is one of the stories uh, that just has it has all. It just has all of the seven keys, and we'll point them out. Um, we will point them out as we go along. But first off, um, you, you you'll notice. Uh, okay, this is a story. It is a legend, but within that story, uh, we have it's 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 mysticism. God communicated with Noah in a vision. That's that's 
mysticism. Um, and, and I don't think it's, there should be any disputes about that because it says, you know, God spoke to Noah. Because remember, there, there was no other way of communicating then. And God communicated in a vision. So we got mysticism. Well, we have all these other keys too. So, um, so let, let's, let's go on. All right. Now we, we ended um, last week in chapter six. So, so we'll do chapter six, 13 to 16. All right. So God said to Noah, okay, there we have our mysticism. The end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is full of wickedness through men and destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark and daub it without, <clears throat> oh, without and within with pitch. And this is how you shall make it, all right? And the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. And you shall make a window in the ark, and to the width of a cubit shall you finish it above, and the door of the ark you shall make in its side with lower second and third decks you shall make it. Now, we're not going to go into all the structures, uh, because remember, this is a story, okay? And um, and we will learn that really and truly, um, it is not historically proven. Um, and but the story, the story has come with it's put in the Bible. It's there, and um, and and people think, okay. Um, uh, tradition and tradition of Christianity. Um, you know, I think some people realize that it's 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 a story. It's kind of a legend. But I always I always look this up on 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 the internet because because there's so many different uh, things. But but the whole um, there are still people who believe it actually happened who are searching in these mountains over there in, in Turkey and whatnot. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're still doing that. And, um, and so it just, it just lends to the fact that this really is a story. And okay, so I did a little bit, so just to, to, just to do some comparison. Um, all right, and you notice I have there, and I've got it on the next page too. Um, uh -oh. oh, there we go. Okay, now let's talk about a cubit. All right, a cubit is essentially 18 inches. Okay, and the way that they measured it was from the tip, the tip of the middle finger to the elbow and that's they that's their cubit and it equates to approximately 18 inches in our um, um, our, our measuring system um, so so I I, the, the, I didn't check the math you can go back and check the math if you want. but uh, uh, but I did get that the, 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 that someone translated it into that the arc uh, would have been 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet tall. Now, and they have this wonderful comparison here, and but it's going to help as we as we read some of the scriptures and what what the story is all about. It's going to help us understand even further that this is a story and can't be taken literally. So what you see is a you see a cruise ship, okay? Probably not the largest one, but you see a carnival cruise ship there that's 893 feet long, okay? And whereas Noah's Ark was 450 feet. Now, so that will give you a perspective, but 
you have to remember back then when they were telling this story, when the story, the, the, the idea of 300 cubits and whatnot was, uh, was just totally unreal uh, to, uh, to people because, you know, they, they didn't, uh, well, they had ships over in the Mediterranean, but, you know, but basically um, that, that th this was a true am amplification for when the story was told, okay? So basically, I, I just did the, some of the scripture about Noah, and then I separated out the scripture about the flood because it's it's describing the story and we really don't have time to read the whole, all the little details. So for, for Noah, okay, in Genesis six, all right, God said, but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall enter into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. Now, the I, I don't have the passage that says, Noah, Noah was chosen because he was righteous. Okay, he he was following God's ways, um, and that's basically um, why he was chosen uh, in 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 the story. Okay, and <clears throat> so he he followed God's uh, instructions and built the ark. All right, then God said to Noah, "Enter into the ark." you and all your household, for you alone have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Um, okay. <clears throat> so the, the, the whole idea of, of the ark was to preserve, okay, Noah, Noah and his family would be the only people left on, on the earth because they were, they were righteous. And that, and God wanted that um, Noah, Noah's righteousness uh, to be part of the covenant and to carry on. Okay. And then, <clears throat> okay. And remember, I, let, let's see, I don't think I have that passage right. And then, they entered the they they entered the ark, okay, and and it came to pass. Then after seven days, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. Now, let's I tried to. Hold on. Okay, all right. So concerning the flood, all right, Genesis 6, 17. And behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh that has the breath of life in it from under heaven and everything that is on the earth shall die. Now, remember, this is a story, so let's not pin this on Let's not pin this on God right away, okay? All right, four, and then we go seven, four. For in seven days, I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And every living thing that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And then we go to, to 710. And it came to pass after seven days. Oh, I already did that. Okay, the water came upon the earth. All right. Okay, and the rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And the flood lasted 40 days upon the earth and the waters increased and bore up the ark so that it was lifted up above the earth. 
and the waters prevailed and rose higher upon the earth and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And I'll explain those things in, in, that are bold, bold. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth so that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. 15 cubits above the mountains did the waters prevail. And the mountains were covered and the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Now, that is, that's just a, a summary of, of what it was, what it was like. Now, and I have a note here and it says amplification. All right. Um, well, notice too, the literary style, 40 days and 40 nights. Now think about it, where you, where you hear 40 days and 40 nights. A um, couple other places in the Bible, and that's, that's, that's the tradition, that's the literary style. Um, and, but, so it, it's, uh, the, uh, the whole story is just full of amplification. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with the animals. So now we have the Aramaic language here, and it makes a difference. Dr. Lamsa didn't translate this, but, if you go back up here, and the waters prevailed and rose higher upon the earth. Now, but let's talk about that. And that's that's been part of the reason why the story, um, it has been, it's just been interpreted that God destroyed the entire earth. But not so, because that word, Arda, it can mean earth, but land it means land okay it means a country a field a region a soil or a floor and it is most appropriate here that it is land and rose higher upon the land um and we're talking or or that that region whatever um <clears throat> and we have another Aramaic word, and it says, uh, all the mountains under the whole heaven were covered. And that word for heaven is Shmeya, and it means heaven or sky. So this takes, this brings it down to, this was the region, okay? This was in that region. The um, historically, uh, um, well, let's fin let's finish this. Okay, so it's it's all the high mountains under the whole under the whole sky uh, uh, were covered, and um, so if you think about the well the the cubits, all right. The water was high as the mountains, over top of the mountains, okay? And um, if you think about that, it's just not, um, it's just not, um, it's not reasonable. It's really not possible. Now, and the, in the commentary, there's some arguments about that, uh, uh, that, that, you know, scientists and geologists, you know, we always are trying to, to get the, the particulars. Um, and, um, but, but if, if this were so, uh, well, there is a thing about where the, the waters would, wouldn't hardly be any, but anyway, um, that's, that's the Aramaic language and, and it's all, it's amplification. Now, okay, was there, is there a basis for this story? Now, there are other stories um, that came before this uh, with, a, with the same kind of idea and, and content and, and the ark. And one of them was Gilgamesh and I don't, I can't explain or whatnot, but, but there were several stories like this. And historically, okay, 
there, there are records of floods um, of, of like massive floods in that area. Um, and so, so the writer, the writer of the story, there may have been a flood, okay, and there might have been an arc at some point in time, but this is the writer writing the story and basing it on that, that particular, um, that there, there was seemingly a flood. And remember, this is legend at some time. And so, and the writer, and we're back to the theme of people, people, okay, from, from Seth, which was Adam's third son, to Noah, okay, everything, remember Seth became, um, Seth walked in God's ways and, and his generations, but between Seth and Noah, uh, things got out of hand. Um, people uh, turned away from God. They started uh, worshiping other gods and whatnot. And so we get to, so, you know, we get to Noah and the writer of this story or the teller of this story um, was addressing the fact that people had gotten so wicked and that the flood was God's way of, of getting rid of the wicked people uh, and giving humanity a, a second a second chance, a second um, uh, start. Now, I picked these two verses out, Genesis 7:11, Genesis 8:2. 2. Um, it, it's just a very typical, uh, writing style of of the uh, of the ancient um, uh, people, and it is symbolism. Okay, because in in uh, seven eleven, in the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, on that very day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth. And the windows of heaven were open. Uh, this is symbolism. The 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 fountains of the great deep. Well, that's that's it's the 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 ocean, you know, coming up from the deep. And the windows of heaven were open. Well, that's where rain comes from. And but this is the writing style uh, of of the ancient Near East. And then in in um, eight two, of course, this is when the flood was. Um, was done, then the fountains of the deep um, and the windows of heaven were closed. No more rain could come down and the rain from the, the sky was restrained. So I, I put those in there because it's just a, a, a really good example of, of the symbolism and, and the, way that they, the way that they wrote. All right. Okay, and if we go to chapter eight, three through five, and the waters receded from the earth gradually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters abated. And in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, the ark rested upon the mountains of Cardo. And the waters decreased gradually until the 10th month. On the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Okay, let's do a little imagining here um, before we, um, so, so according to the scriptures that we had here, uh, Noah and his uh, family, uh, they were on the ark, and now I didn't mention all the animals, but, um, but you know that it says, uh, they took uh, pairs of all the animals, the beasts uh, on, on earth, and um, they were to take them into the ark because they because then they would reproduce in the new in, in the new uh, world after God had destroyed everything. And so so just just imagining if you you know if you wanted wanted to think about taking this story literally 
And, um, and, and I read on the internet and the Google and everything that um, I just, I mean, seriously, these people are serious. And I said, well, according to our interpretation of whatnot, they could have had 70,000 animals and stuff on there. And it's just, it's just totally mind boggling because recall the size of the, um, the size of the ark. And I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise ship, uh, even, even a medium size one. Um, I mean, it's, it's just, it's not possible. But again, it's, it's all amplification. And <clears throat> so, um, but, but think about it. And then, okay. And then after, and remember now, they're supposed to be on the very top of a mountain. Now, the very tops of mountains, it doesn't matter what season it is, it is cold, very cold. And so, um, and, and so here they were uh, with all of these animals uh, on, uh, on that ark. They, they, they were on there for 40 days and 40 nights. And then for, for uh, uh, 150 days more, okay, on a boat with all of these animals, um, animals, birds, and whatnot. And uh, so uh, just, just pointing out, you can't take this story literally, but, but through the ages, um, it, it's, just, it's just amazing what, what people have done with it. All right, and, um, and notice here, Okay, the ark rested upon the mountains of Cardu. Now, that really means the mountains of Kurdistan, okay? And the mountains of Kurdistan, uh, if you recall what we say about Dr. Lamsa, uh, Dr. Lamsa came from the mountains of Kurdistan, just, just interestingly enough. And of course, that's where the, the Garden of Eden was up in that area too. And I do have a map, I do have a map later uh, that will show us. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me go back here. Oh, 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 wait, wait, we, we missed the map. All right. The map, if you'll notice, um, if you'll notice that modern day Turkey, Iraq, and you know, Iraq and Turkey have a, have a border there. All right, and we have this Mount Ararat. Now, the story says that that's the, the, uh, the ark ended up on top of Mount Ararat. Okay, um, and again, that's like Turkey, Turkey or, or Iraq um, today. And so, just going back to what we were saying, the 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 boat would have been on um, sitting on the top of that mountain, and uh, it would have been very cold. And remember, <laughs> um, everyone thinks that he had animals from, you know, from all from all the earth. Well, if if there if there was one, and it, and if there was an ark, and if and if ark and if and if he saved some animals, it's only going to be animals from that region. And so, um, so again, it's just the way it's been interpreted, and. Uh, Hold on just a sec. All right. And as I say, people are still um, still looking. If you Google some of this, it's just incredible. Um, uh, people went on this journey and they reported that they found the ark. You know, it, it's kind of like people finding the statue of uh, of uh, of Lot's wife in, in Saul, which, which just never happened. So Okay, now we're going to 
we're, go we're going to end here this week because next week, then we're going to talk about after the flood and and what and some more of what um, the meaning has for us um, today. And uh, but basically, most Christians, including most professing Christian geologists, believe that Noah's flood was either a myth, uh, legend, meaning it never happened, or a large but localized flood in the Mesopotamian village valley of the Tigris and Euphrates, which is modern day Iraq, um, is a story described in exaggerated language. And that's what we just learned. This is full of amplification. Um, and uh, it's the way they wrote the story. But, but it does, you know, but it does have the point and it 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 has the the point. Remember, it's it, it's tracing the Jewish uh, heritage from from Adam, um, and um, and <clears throat> and it's serving to show people generations falling away from God, and then. And, and then coming back. Now, and we'll learn next week about, you know, God is not going to do this again, according to this story. Um, but that's, <clears throat> but that's what we're, that's what, that's what we will learn. And so um, I thought that we would do some humor because this is one of the, Noah's Ark is one of the most illustrated of, uh, 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 stories in, in in the Bible, and so I do have a little bit of humor here, and I I hope um, I I don't think it will offend anybody, but it's not meant to offend. It's just it actually it's 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 emphasizing that the story is a legend, and it's told it still has a purpose, but but it you know but it's told in that that ancient Semitic style of, of writing. So here we go with the, here we go with the, 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 the humor. Okay. And maybe the whales would be okay staying in the water. Okay. Just, just a little, um, a little humor. Um, and this one, <laughs> Um, because see, you know, when you have a story like that, that you have to understand the ancient people, they, they don't, they, they didn't care about these little details. They were just trying to make a point, but you know, we think about it. Okay. You know, uh, in, in all those days on the ark, you don't think they reproduced and all of that if the story was real. So, so I thought this was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> and then we have the last one. Maybe I shouldn't have brought the termites. So uh, just a little bit of humor at the end. Um, let me um, let me just um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna well, let's see what, what else do I got here? That's next week. Okay, and we do accept contributions and we are now officially a 501c3. And of course, um, this the, the Aramaic light on Genesis is the commentary that we that we base this on. Uh, I mean, we do have other we add other stuff, but but you know, if you didn't have it, you might want to get that 